I've got here the Iridium keyboard from Waldorf and the very first thing I have to say about this is it's absolutely stunning. It really is a nice looking synth, possibly the best looking synth I, I've ever had in here. It's just so nice, it's sleek and it's modern and it's actually got a minimalist look even though it's got all these knobs and buttons on it. There's just something really attractive about it, I can't really put my hand on it. The matte finish on it is absolutely gorgeous, it's a bit like the original I've got behind me there, I've had that for a few months now, but there's just something, uh, I don't know, it's got that little bit extra that makes it absolutely gorgeous. The knobs are really well spaced. People have said on the Iridium that they're a bit too close. I'd never really thought that but when you put them next to this there's just that little bit of extra space in there. We've got two independent sets of ADSRs for the filter and for the VCA envelope and that's really handy. It just stops you having to do that additional button press. It just makes things a little bit slicker to use. The screen is exactly the same. We've got a bunch of buttons down the side for macros and they're for keyboard things. So if we go into the macros, transpose uh, five is on one. So we've got a bunch of little things we can put in there. Glide, transpose, pitch bend range and tuning. So let's put on two pitch bend range. Let's put that on to two. Oh, let's turn it on. <laughs> So just a few handy little things for the keyboard. The keyboard itself is uh, polyphonic aftertouch. Uh, I don't really know the difference between polyphonic aftertouch and MPE. It does have in here as a modulation source MPEY, but what the difference is, I've no idea. But the keyboard feels absolutely gorgeous again. <laughs> Just showing the polyphonic aftertouch there, and the whole thing's worth about £500 more than the original version, and I think it's absolutely worth it. I've just bought a new Futter keyboard for my Profit 600, and uh, and that cost me about over £200. It's not got polyphonic aftertouch, uh, so this I'd imagine is a lot more expensive anyway. Plus, you get the the bigger body, etc. I think for the £500, if you're going to spend the £1,900 on the original two and a half on this, or two, two on that, two and a half on this, something like that. This is definitely worth it for the depth of expression. I'm not a massive fan of aftertouch or velocity, to be honest, but on this, um, with the polyphonic aftertouch, which I've never really played before, you just can do all sorts of things with those big cinematic soundscapes. It's really nice. It really does invite you into play and just spent hours messing around with it and some of the sound examples you'll hear in this you'll see that uh, I just got a little bit carried away so I've chopped everything down as much as I can but uh, you know what is the Iridium you probably already know but just because I've got it out and I'm doing a video I'll just quickly run through what it's USP which is the fact that you've got these five different synth engines we've got wavetable waveform which is virtual analog we've got particle and that's a sampler and granular synth engine resonator and that's mathematically modeling striking and bowing things plus we've got kernels which is like an FM synth on steroids and I'll quickly run through each of them just in case you don't know what they are. Wavetable gives us those typical PPG style tones. You can run through the wavetables. I think there's 128 in here, but they are the Waldorf wavetables. Like if you know the microwave or the microwave XT and all the rest of them, you will know these, uh, these wavetables. They're quite famous. And this is them here. All the typical ones. And like with everything on this, it's got its own little twist on things. Here, for example, we've got legacy, harsh, and dirty modes, and their ways of bringing digital alias in to make it sound like one of the earlier microwaves. We've got things like smoothed or stepped transitions or movement through the different waves. Let's put it on eight steps. 
actually get distinct changes in tone or we can have it smooth. And that creates a smooth transition through the wavetable. So we've got smoothed, if we go into eight steps, much more obvious. So moving over to the waveform engine. We've got the sawtooth, sine, triangle, square, a pink noise and white noise. So all the standard analog wave shapes you'd expect, and then we can warp those. It's like a shark's tooth. So we're sort of getting those intermediate waveforms that you get on um, on sequential instruments where you go from a sawtooth to a sine to a to a pulse, for example. Get all that sort of stuff here. Let's put it back on a sawtooth. And the big twist you got here is this thing called kernels, which essentially stacks waveforms on top of each other. Massive super souls straight away. Sounds like it's bringing in a sub, doesn't it? Yeah, sub on a pulse, maybe. Definitely. So loads of things to play with there. We've got detune, we've got stereo image, we've got the count of the number of kernels. Up to eight. So pretty cool, let's look at the particle engine.
that's a sample patch with samples spread across the keyboard. Nice, isn't it? I like the way you can hear the mechanical action on that top one. Need to load the sample in. Starsky Car plays the Iridium. We can edit that sample. Edit the start point. Stars star 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 Starsky Car. Star End point, maybe. Starsky Car. Starsky Car. Starsky Car. Let's loop it. Let's put it into loop mode, actually. Starsky Car. Starsky Car. Starsky Car. Starsky car, Starsky car, Starsky car. Loop start, change that. Starsky car, Starsky car, Starsky car, Starsky car, Starsky car, Starsky car. You get the idea. Starsky, 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 Starsky. Then using that, we can go to particle mode. Okay. And that just chops it up into tiny little bits and we can move through it in different ways. Let's change the position. And a bit of release. granular engine and is a really great way of creating all sorts of tones from whatever you like and some of the presets make great use of this. Richard Devine's got a few in here where it goes round robin through various samples so every time you hit a key it plays a different sample and it's playing it in a slightly different way so every time you press a key you're getting something slightly different. A really great way to get lovely evolving tones as I say there's over 3,000 presets or thereabouts in here uh, and loads of them make use of that for these lovely cinematic effects. Then we've got the resonator engine, and as far as I can tell, it's like a car plus strong mathematical model. It works in almost exactly the same way as things like Mutable Platt's car plus strong.
here in red, the bandpass filters, and you can see down on the spectrum analyzer that they pretty much match up what we're getting or what we're setting on, um, on the timbre. That sounds like something being struck. Stroked or bowed maybe, change with the attack. We can change the, the bandpass filters, change the Q and the Q curve. And you'll also notice that you can hear me saying Starsky in there as well. And that's the little twist in this one, is that unlike most Carplus Strong or these sort of resonator models that basically start off with a little impulse, a little click, this you can use anything, and this is, as it happens, it's using Starsky Car. So, loads to play with in there, and the final one is this one called Kernels. And if we come to this one, we can see here that we've got on the main screen, it shows you different controls for each of the oscillators. If we look at the oscillators, we can see on each of the controls, we've got four different parameters, and they're depending on which of the synth engines you choose. So, on Wavetable, it's the spectrum. On Waveform, it's the number of kernels. On Particle, it's the count. And on resonator, it's the repeats. But there's nothing there for the kernels, and that's because it's such a complex engine, you set it all up yourself. But if you load up a simple template, we've got ratio, attack, timbre, feedback, and decay. And it's easy to use the templates or the presets on this, it's all set up for you, but you can set it up yourself, but it is really in-depth. If we look at edit in this simple FM one, we can see we've got kernel one modulating kernel two. So if we go into kernel one, we can see it's a sign, and the twist here is that, unlike a DX7, for example, that like you can only use signs, you can use any sound source that you've got in this, that's all the wavetables, all the ways within those wavetables, all your samples. So let's use something else. To the wavetable. You can use any of those wavetables, as I say. which massively changes the tone, and we're not listening to K1 there, we're listening to the K1's effect on K2. Wanted to listen to K1, for example, we could send it out. Then if we look at the algorithm, we've got K1 going directly to the output, and we've also got K1 going into K2 as a modulation source as well. And we've got an envelope on each of these, so let's just add a bit of attack to that. And now if we just listen to K1 modulating K2, again, you can hear the envelope having an effect. Let's go back into the envelope of K1. And they're not just simple ADSR envelopes, so loads of fun and loads of confusion to be had. If we go into the modulation types, we've got Phase FM, which is like a DX7, True FM, Ring Modulation, Amplitude Modulation, and Wavetable Position. So as I say, it's pretty complex, but does create some amazing tones. Let's load some of the templates. Let's load FM Tines. Bells. We've got the odd kernels modulating the even kernels. So I know that's just a whistle stop tour of the oscillators on this, that is so much to look at, but hopefully it gives you a nice overview. Next thing to look at is definitely the filters. The 
filters on this are all digital, but there are loads of them. If we look at the options we get here, we've got um, state variable filter and all the different types of state variables. So 12 dB low pass, and we got saturated and dirty. Then we got 24 dB low pass with saturated and dirty. And we get um, 12 dB high pass with saturated and dirty, 12 dB band pass, saturated and dirty. You get the idea. Let's just put a chord on and run through a few. So there are distinct differences between the saturated and the dirty, and that's just the state um, variable filter model. We've got razor model, whatever that is, I'm not sure. Whoa, some, uh, some high resonances there. Let's just turn that down. What we don't get on this are those really low rumbles that make the windows in here rattle. And we also don't get those really harsh resonances like you get on something like the MS-20. It's all quite well behaved. But turn the resonance all the way up, so watch your ears. I was completely wrong about those rumbles. Coming from low to high, you don't get them, but coming from high to low, you do. Weird. That's some meaty rubble, that, isn't it? Anyway, what else have we got here? Well, let's have a look at the different models we've got on Razer. Again, a huge selection. If we go to the next model, Largo. We know Largo is one of their soft synths. Again, massive selection. Let's put a chord on again. Take that resonance down. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you get the idea. It's quite a well-behaved filter. If you want something really dirty and nasty, you're not gonna get it off this. Uh, the maximum peak you go to is around 19 kilohertz, I think. Yeah, it doesn't skyrocket into the atmosphere. Which is what you expect from a digital filter to avoid aliasing. Yeah, it disappears before it gets to 20. We've also got PPG as well. PPG's got less models because that was um, analog. So you've got 24 or 12 dB. Again, saturated and dirty modes. And then we've got the quantum models as well. And like the PPG, they're analog, so Turn it up as high as it'll go. As I say, we've got filter one and filter two, and we can route those in various ways. Filter one and filter two, route in. Have them in parallel with the digiformer or before or after the Digiformer. What's the Digiformer? It's this extra filter we've got here. 
We've got it in bypass at the minute, but we can have it as a drive circuit, a gain circuit, a combi filter, bit crusher ring mod, and then we've got the, the Nave, PPG, Largo, state variable filters, and lots of different filter models as well. So you can have filters in series. You can have the Digiformer followed by the two filters, or the two filters followed by the Digiformer. The Digiformer can be a filter. Let's just have a little play with it. So that's all very useful stuff. Let's turn it off for now and listen to the, the two separate filters. We've got two dual controls for the filters. They're in independent mode at the minute. different ways of linking them. Here we've got one called Twin Peaks. Let's go to another mode, Escaping. So it's called Escaping because Filter 2 is escaping from Filter 1. Opposition. So interesting enough, let's put them on independent, shall we? And we can pan them. All sorts of weird things you can do to send your ears crazy. And obviously everything's modulatable. Just quickly touch on the modulation here. Let's modulate um, filter one with LFO one. Whoops. It would be nice here if you just twist the knob actually. Filter one cut off and LFO two. We will put on filter two cut off. There we go. Got no amount on yet. Let's turn the amount up on both of them. You get the idea, then we can modulate the modulation using controllers back into the modulation page. So the controller for LFO1, let's set that as aftertouch. There we go. So that's a bit like a 3D modulation matrix where you've got the aftertouch controlling the rate of uh, LFO1, which is controlling the modulation of the cutoff. Let's put something modulating the rate of LFO1 as well, maybe that on the aftertouch as well. So LFO one rate, put it onto the aftertouch, onto LFO one rate. There we go. Let's change the amount a bit, so. Super simple, there's 40 modulation slots in this, so there's absolutely tons you can do, and it's used in an awful lot of the presets. In the effects, we've got phaser, chorus, flanger, delay, reverb, EQ, drive, and a compressor. And we've got five different slots, and you can put anything in any of the five slots. Let's just try a bit of delay. And you can see here we've got limited control of each of the effects, but it's exactly what you want on a synth. You don't want huge amounts of parameters to control, but they all sound really nice. 
It's very controlled. We're not getting those huge feedback distortions you get off a tape echo. Let's check the reverb out. Let's check the presets again. Big. Quantum Endless sounds good, doesn't it? Does sound pretty endless. I don't know, let's just try the phaser as well. Chorus. really nice, doesn't it? We've also got a compressor on here, which is quite cool. Other things I've not really touched on are the complex modulator. It's like a, a complex envelope. You can have two curves on there. We can play around with them. There you go, we get a complex modulation curve. Well, all sorts of fun to be had with that. And finally, on the envelopes, let's just put a curve in there so you can see what's happening. We can have exponential or linear on each of the curves. So we get an awful lot of control over everything there as well. My big takeaway from this is if you can get your hands on one, have a play on one, do, because it wasn't until I actually started playing with it, started tweaking it, that it really drew me in. And it really does look fabulous and it feels great to use. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. And if it was, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me on Patreon and all the rest of it. And check out the links below if you want to buy one, um, because I've got a couple of affiliate links there and I might get a little bit of, uh, of a kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything more. So I will see you soon.